Over the last few days I've noticed lots of dams of flying nymphs emerging from the water. Let's take a closer look at them and learn a bit more. This is a newly emerged adult damselfly. If we take a close look at it, we can actually tell a lot about it from its markings. In the area that I live, there are two common species of damselfly, the common blue and the large red. The large red damselflies are the first to emerge, with the blue coming a few weeks later. You can see this one has a red abdomen. Also, we can tell this is an immature female from its black thorax and yellow stripes. Those yellow stripes will change to red as she matures. There is another species of red damselfly called the small red damselfly. As the name suggests, they are smaller, but they also have orange legs, whereas the large red has black legs like this one. But what about before they emerge as adults? Here is a damselfly nymph that has found its way into my tank. You can see it waving its abdomen about in the water. Once the time has come for the adult to emerge, the nymph will climb out of the water onto a stem of vegetation like the water irises I have here in the pond. You can see here is one newly emerged. It will stay on this leaf while it dries out its wings before flying away. Nearby there is another adult emerging and I managed to set up a time lapse of this one. If you look carefully, you should be able to see its wings enlarging as they fill with fluid. Unfortunately, the battery on my camera ran out before the process was complete. Each picture here was taken 60 seconds apart, so this is approximately an hour and a half of footage. So how do I know this is a damselfly, not a dragonfly? Well, let's take a look at the two side by side. So from left to right, we have a dragonfly, a dragonfly nymph casing, a damselfly nymph casing, and a damselfly. The dragonfly was found dead last year, and the damselfly was an unfortunate casualty I found floating in the pond. The first obvious difference is the size. Dragonflies are much bigger, but there are other differences. The eyes of a dragonfly are very large and close together, whereas the damselfly's eyes are separated. The dragonfly holds its wings out to the side when resting, as you can see here, but the damselfly holds its wings along the length of their body. Taking a closer look, you can see the intricate network of vessels within the wings. There are some other differences that you can't see. A damselfly will live for a few weeks to a few months, but some species of dragonfly can live for up to seven years. Most of the time is spent as a larva. In the UK, most will live for around one to two years, with life as a flying adult lasting a few months. Hopefully in the coming weeks, we should be able to see some more damselflies, including the common blue. Dragonflies emerge later in the year. Last year, I only saw one dragonfly around the pond, so I'm hoping I will get to see some more this year. Well, this is Frog Watch, not Damselfly Watch, so we should take a quick look at the tadpoles and see how they're doing. This is one of the most advanced tadpoles in the tank. It has the biggest, most developed legs. You can see how its body is changing shape too. It's becoming longer with a more defined head, which is becoming slightly triangle shaped as the front legs are developing under the skin. At this stage, I'm regularly feeding them both spinach leaves and bloodworm, as both the tadpoles with and without legs will still feed on both food sources. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please come back next week for another update on the tadpoles, and hopefully I'll find something else interesting to show you too. Have a great week, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.